maybe maybe that's my dream job is being like a, a best in show judge because <laughs> you literally just get to like pat down dogs yes <laughs> day after day except i'd have i'd have to work on not like squealing while i did it <laughs> <laughs> you're so cute <laughs> mm, how tall are you let me see your teeth <laughs> show me your teeth Pope. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Let's Boop Snoots. Hello, my name is Vero. And I'm Heidi. And we're going to boop snoots. Today we're going to boop snoots. We are are going to talk about dog shows. (laughs) We're going to talk about dog shows. (laughs) How do they work? I read about it and it's very confusing. So I hope hope whatever we're going to put out today makes sense. Yes, it is confusing. Like I was very surprised. Like I, it was always something I was curious about. And, and I've always like, you know how you channel surf sometimes and you're looking for something to watch and like, there's been various, I've never watched like the, the national dog show from like beginning to end, No, but if it's on TV, I would watch it. Cause I was like, Oh, dogs. Yeah. Doggies. <laughs> I'll watch doggies. And it's, and it's almost like, like, you know, when you watch figure skaters and like when they go for their, like, sometimes you're like, oh, you don't want them to fall, but you kind of want to see them like fall. (laughs) It's like on the dog shows, it's like, you don't, you don't want to see them mess up, but it's kind of funny. I want the dog to like run into the audience. (laughs) (laughs) Or or take a big poop right in the middle of the ring. Oh my God. And then get stank paw. (laughs) Like Ralph. (laughs) Ralph got the stank pot. Yeah, he had a little poo-poo and stepped in it. And then (laughs) I didn't realize until he was indoors. With his stank pot. With his stank (laughs) pot. Stank pot everywhere. Oh, no. (laughs) Poopy pot. Oh, no. All right. Well, um, I looked up because I I always like to sort of follow things in a linear sort of fashion. And um, I looked up how to get started with dog showing. It starts with, you can start showing your dog at six months or older, and um, you need to be registered with the organization. So for for the show, we pretty much got all all of our uh, information through the American Kennel Club, the AKC. Um, I don't, to tell you the truth, I don't know if there's a Canadian version of a national like dog show. I don't, don't really know. know. I know they have events and stuff for like different breeds and stuff, but I don't believe there to be a Canadian like national, like national dog show. Yeah. I think it's mm. an American. So um, to to get involved in showing dogs, you uh, like I said, they have to be six months or older. You have to be registered with the AKC. Um, they cannot be spayed or neutered. So they have to be intact, intact. is the term that they Schnubbles. use. Schnobbles. And um, you need to start looking at your breed standards, which we'll get into a little bit later. So it's basically looking at different physical attributes or characteristics of your dog breed, like what they were bred to do. So there's like different groups and stuff, which we'll we'll get into later. But um, and then you start training. So they recommend uh, going through what's called the confirmation classes. So you learn... um, there's a variety of different places throughout the U.S. where you can sign up for these classes and they get you into the basics of sort of like what is required of a dog show. So some of the things you're going to hear about is stacking. And that's like how you get them to pose. You mm-hmm. know how they get them to stand like super perfectly. Looks so like they look like a regal te- a little bit. Yes. Mm-hmm. Like, like model dogs. So they teach you how to stack and they teach you about gait, which is the movement that is appropriate like at the appropriate speed of what your dog was bred to do like of of your dog breed so if you have like a hound or or like sporting is like one of the categories that's where you see some of them like running around the ring like with their dog like so you probably have to run so they can see like the movement of their legs and stuff like that so they teach you about that um And then they start getting you going to what's called match shows. So it's an informal setting uh, with like seasoned um, dog show people there so that they can help you. They can give you tips and tricks. They have judges there that tell you like what can you work on, like where you might lose points and that type of stuff. And there's also uh, the opportunity to get a mentor. So they have like mentors that will help you like people who have done like many 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 dog shows and can just help you sort of get into it and again 
I'm, I'm taking a teaching course right now and we we're talking this week on mentorship. <laughs> and so it's basically like a really nice relationship where you like learn from one another. So then um, once you've gone through all of that, then you can start looking uh, about uh, to possibly enter into some of the events that the AKC handles. So like, and that's all available online through their site. There's, they have like a ginormous site with like a ton of information available. Um, but you can find out all the info for the event from where to stay, um, right up into like how long the event's going to take, mm. like what different judges are going to be there, what the different classes are. And, uh, then you get registered and um, they send you a, an event schedule. So there's like certain times that certain certain rings. That, like I, I imagine that they do this in like huge centers with like multiple yeah. rings. Yeah. Cause it's like, it's a lot of, it's a lot of dogs and it's a lot of people. Like it, it I would imagine that like your dog has to be pretty well socialized to do this too. I think it's in, um, Oh, what is it called? It's in, Oh my God. Something garden. Is it like Madison Square Garden? Is it no. that? No, because I remember like when we talked about it on a different show, I think like it was hosted in. Um... <laughs> no, I can't remember. Either. <laughs> <laughs> I think it, I thought it was like in New Jersey, potentially. It's in New York. Uh, wow. The dog show. Here, hand a sec. Where is the national dog show held? So it's in Philadelphia. Yes. Okay. So the National Dog Show takes place at the Greater Philadelphia Expo Center. Okay. So I think so I think that's the I was like close. the major big You were very close. <laughs> um I think that's where the big one takes place is, but I think they hold other smaller events where you can sort of like work your way up to like the the big one. Big the big daddy of all dog shows. So it's a nice way to get started. I think that um you know, in terms of, of puppy training, uh, we've we've had all kinds of episodes now on different ways to train your puppy and different things to look out for and good practices to start right in the beginning. But if you are getting a dog with the purposes of showing it, um, I would start handling it daily from day one, you know, like doing like watch videos on how these judges like, ha like, yeah, like it's... handle the dogs for confirmation. It's called, it's called confirmation. And that's where you see them giving the dog like a pat down, lifting up their teeth, lifting up their tails, like squeezing the, in the innards of their thighs, <laughs> touching their stump, like all like, it's like, a. And when they do like their stacking, you can see them sometimes like just move their yes. hind legs, like in position. Yes. Yeah. So um, I would start by doing all of those things and, and same, same thing, start taking them to like heavily dense, like populated areas <laughs> with like tons of people yeah. and like tons of other dogs. Cause you want them to, and with the leash training, because obviously you want them to be able to focus on you because at a huge event like that mm -hmm. in a massive center with other dogs smells <laughs> and sights and sounds and dogs and people and people touching you and people like all of that. Um, requires a lot of work so um those would be my recommendations for starting out with your show popeye show popeye <laughs> sounds like a lot of work i feel like if i had a show popeye i'd be like we can't go outside when it's raining <laughs> it'd be like a oh, little yeah. spoiled little brat have, have you seen the movie best in show yes and I think it's like very particular people who <laughs> decide to, that's like commentary. I'm sure it's like, you know, it's a parody on like what people are actually like, but I don't know. I, I went to a cat show once. I went to a cat show once here in Ottawa <laughs> and it was like, it's very, very particular group of people. Hmm, a cat show. <laughs> but I imagine, I imagine dog owners are no different no. <laughs> for show dog, show dog owners. Excuse me. It's like pageant parents. Yes. Like, Honey, they're honey a little bit crazy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> but at the same time, I'm like tempted. And I'm sure everybody thinks their dog is just like the best looking. But like, I think I've said this before, but like I sometimes I look at Weimaraners on the internet and I'm like, oh, they just they just don't look as cute. Like <laughs> their snout's too long or their eyes are too small or their ears are too big for their face or like yeah. they look like just like weird versions of like the cutest dog ever mr gibbon yeah. <laughs> <laughs> obviously that's not a biased statement not at everybody. all everybody 
elephant. Not at all. It's like Ralph is, is the cutest puppy. Oh, of course. And like he but is do, the do cutest on Instagram. Well, he he is. He all is. of Instagram. <laughs> But, like, as I was, like, looking up the different um, parts to this, like, researching for this show on the on dog showing, like, even, like, one of the videos that I watched was, like, one of the, like, tips and tricks events that they do. And, like, it was all goldens. <laughs> it was all golden Aww. retrievers. And some of them, like, look exactly the same. Like, I literally cannot, like, I, I almost want to ask, like, somebody who judges dogs, like, on the regular. And maybe next time they have a cat show, maybe I'll go ask a crazy cat show judge. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll just say, like, because some of them, like, just looks, they look exactly the same. Yeah. Like, they're, like, they're super cute. Like, you can't even, there was two dogs that I could, I literally could not tell the difference between. Aww. So it's like, how do you judge? Like, where, where do you? they lose points or where do they whatever like or is it what they're feeling for or like the subtle movements that they make during their examination or yeah like I I wonder well they can lose point I was reading about this and they can lose point on height so there's like like parameters and then yes. if they're like one inch off mm -hmm. um depending on how much within that one inch they they're penalized Oh, okay. Um, Depending, I guess, on the other dogs that are competing yeah. as well. And then if they're like, yes. if it's more than an inch, then they're disqualified. And then there is the teeth placement, um, mm -hmm. the hair. So I read that um, unless it's from like old age, if they have mm -hmm. more than one, like a few white hairs on their body, um, mm -hmm. they lose points. Wow. Um, they can cut the whiskers, which I, I'm not sure why you would, but yeah, you would lose mm. points for that. Anything with their eyes, like that's that's abnormal, like the eyelids, mm -hmm. uh, lose points. What else? Yeah, it's just so crazy. Yeah. The, like, I mean, like, they lose like points looking... at multiple areas, but oh, it's man. just like, oh my god. Maybe maybe that's my dream job is being like a, a best in show judge because <laughs> you literally just get to like pat down dogs. Yes, <laughs> day after day. Except I'd have I'd have to work on not like squealing while I did it. <laughs> <laughs> You're so cute. <laughs> mm, how tall are you? Let me see your teeths. <laughs> show me your teeths, Pope. <laughs> not stacking. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, you stacked. Ooh, you stacked, Paul Bay. It's going to sound bad. Look at that brisket. I'm going to talk about, <laughs> I think it's four terms that I was reading and I was like, I don't know what these mean. So mm -hmm. I'm going to let you guys know what those mean later on. Yes. Are you ready to take over with how the national dog show? Yeah. So how do dogs shows work? So I went on mm -hmm. the AKC site and there's multiple steps and it's very confusing and there's different awards. Um, so I'm going to go step by step. Mm -hmm. So a dog show is where purebred dogs compete against each other. Um, in the States, it's uh, Westminster, which is in Philadelphia, we have confirmed. Um, and mm -hmm. in the UK, there's one called Cruffs. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, apparently the Cruffs one has changed a bit where there is some agility and obedience like a component of that in it mm -hmm. but the one in the states it's really just like confirmation purely for a show yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so you touched on this already so confirmation it's the dog's like physical attributes so they don't judge the dogs against each other but against like the like i said like the parameters of what's the ideal version of that breed like the height and the head, like the skull, the shoulders, the tail, um, all of that. So yeah, so there's the balance, proportions in size, weight, size, eyes, ears, head, muzzle, whiskers, so the thickness of the whiskers, the teeth, the tail, shoulders, legs, coat, and color. So that's what they that's what they're looking at. Uh, plus the gait and the attitude. On the note of color, I was very si sad to find out that blue wine runners are disqualified. Oh no! From the national dog show—they have to be <laughs> the light gray color. I was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't told Gibbon yet. I don't want to crush his dreams. But don't tell him. 
I won't. He won't find out. <laughs> Let's just start a Canadian national dog show for ourselves, and then we will we will allow blue Weimar animals yeah. in our show. <laughs> <laughs> That's too bad. Is there? What's the reason? It's just color. I couldn't find one. It just. I. I it's legit. Just that they're meant to be like the light gray. I yeah. guess maybe that color came afterwards and. Yeah, kind of like yeah. the silver Labrador Retriever. I'm sure that's not. Oh yeah, allowed yeah. into the yeah, yeah. Are chocolates allowed in? I don't know. Probably, Probably not. Probably not. Hmm. Oh. Hmm. Wiggum. Race, racist. <laughs> Poor Wiggum. <laughs> Wiggum. Poor Gibbs. Poor Wiggum. <laughs> Sorry. No, that's okay. <laughs> um, it is Wiggum's birthday today. Oh, yeah. he would be would thirteen. Would have been. Oh. Yeah. Okay. On to dog shows. So there's the title of champion. So sometimes you'll see um, the breeder's dog name. So like Ralph is Suncozy after party Ralph. So that's his like CKC name. So if Ralph would be a champion, he would have the prefix CH in front of that. Okay. So to become a champion... Uh, you must win a certain number of points, so at least 15 points, from three different judges and gain two major wins from separate judges. So you start, mm -hmm. so you would start with specialty shows that focus on a particular dog breed. So like for me, I would take Ralph, um, go to Golden Retriever special, specialty shows. Specialty shows. <laughs> specialty shows. And then they separate the males and the females. Um, and there are six different classes. So there's like the puppy class, which is six months to uh, 12 months. And then I think there's the 12 to 18 months, I believe. Yeah, 12 to 18. There's novice, uh, bred by exhibitor. Uh, American bread, and then open. So there's six classes. Um, the males would go first, of course. Mm -hmm. <laughs> always, um, always. And then the first place winner uh, doesn't get points. So the first place winner from each class uh, compete for the title of winner's dog for male and winner's bitch mm -hmm. for females. That made me laugh so hard when I was reading it. I was like, winner's bitch. Winner's <laughs> bitch. Um, so, yeah. So, there's a first place for every class. So, puppy, novice, and all that. And then they compete against each other to get the winner's title with the sex, like, separated. And then the reserve winner's award goes to the runner's up for the winner's dog and bitch. So, I guess everybody who competed gets that title. I don't know. It sounds like it. So I guess like the first yeah. place from all the classes, they at least get that mm -hmm. title. And then the oh, first okay. place from the competition of yeah. all those first, pl <laughs> first place um, gets the winner's yes. dog and the winner's bitch title. Yeah. Um, and then they get a number of points uh, depending on how many dogs they competed against. So, and this is done for, for each different like group, right? Is it done by each group or by each breed? By breed. That's what I wasn't clear on. So by that's breed. by breed. Okay. So all like golden yeah. retrievers together. Mm -hmm. um, and you can only get a max of five points at that point. So let's say you took Ralph, you em entered him in to your breed specific class. Okay. Mm -hmm. And he won first place. So he's winner's dog. No, so he would compete. So he would be first Again, place would for puppy. Oh, got you. Yes. And then he would compete with all the first place dogs, like the first in place in novice, the first place in yes. American bred. And then and when he won first place in all of those groups, then he would be winner's yeah, that's, dog. That's what I understand. Okay. Yeah. And if it was Becky, she would be like novice. Except she, like she's not a specific breed; she's like a hound, so this would like never happen. <laughs> but yeah. she let's say, let's say she was a Britney Spaniel, but she would let's say she com won first place for novice, then she would compete against all the other groups. So puppy, um, American even, bred, like, whatever, open. American bred, yeah, open all of that. And then when she won, then she would be winners bitch. Yeah. So she won against all those, then she'd be winners yeah. bitch. Okay. 
That's what I understand. Yeah. I read it. And, I read it a and, few times, and I was like, "This is what I'm grasping out of all this." Yeah, there was a video that the AKC made where it sort of like it it shows it almost like tournament style, like bre- breaking down to like the best in show. Okay, which was a, was a nice visual representation of it. But so when you become winner's dog or winner's bitch, is that when you get your points? Like, at what point do the points come in? When you get winner's dog or winner's bitch. Okay. Yeah. And I think depending on how many dogs you competed against, I guess maybe um, in the... Depends f- on the amount yeah. amount of points. Yeah. That you so get. it's only yeah. like okay. a few dogs in the puppy class. Like if you're... Yeah. Like if Ralph is just competing against another puppy um, and yeah. then he wins winner's dog, he might mm-hmm. just get like one or two points. But if he competed yeah. against like 50 other puppies... Then, then he would maybe like get like full... four or five. Yeah. Um, and then the okay. next award is best best of breed. Mm-hmm. So dogs with a champion title can compete with winners dogs and winners bitch. So there's like three titles here that can. So if you have the champion title, if you have the winners dogs, winners dog title or the winners bitch title, you can compete in best of breed. Um, and then there's the best of winners award, which is only between winners dogs and winners bitch. Uh And it's all separate, like, uh, no, this is like male and female together. And then there's a best of opposite sex. So the best of the opposite sex of best of breed, which is like really (laughs) confusing. So (laughs) so if all the champions compete and there's the um, winner's dogs and winner's bitches that are competing in all of that and a female wins best of breed, Uh then a male will win best of opposite sex. Yeah. Um, and because they... at this point they mix both sexes together. Like initially, yeah. it's the sexes are separated. Yeah. Until you get to like the competition that happens once the winners dog and winners bitch are titles are are named. Yeah. Right. Exactly. And now all the sexes mix together. Exactly. Yes. Okay. Um, and then the best of breed can advance to a group show, which is like the Westminster. Mm-hmm. So there's a little over 150 breeds that are recognized by the AKC. So you can imagine like how many, how big of of an event event it is and how how long it takes. Oh my God. So there's seven groups of dogs. So now they're separated in groups. So there's the sporting dogs, the hounds, working dogs, terriers, toy dogs, non-sporting dogs, and herding dogs. So the best best of breeds compete against each other in group shows. Mm-hmm. Um, so they're separated. Are they separated in breeds at that point? I think they're I don't separated. think so because in... because that's when they that's like the big like when you're getting closer to the finish. Because no, that's they come right. out in their groups. So they come out in their group. So like, it's like a variety of different. Yeah. Breeds. So, so like, like Ralph is... and um, Gibbon. Yeah. Both won best of breeds. Mm-hmm. So now they're competing in a group show, which is like the and Westminster. Gibbon would be under. Yes. And Gibbon would be under sporting dogs. <laughs> yes. Because, because he goes to get the birdies for you. And, and Ralph what, too. What? Is he in sporting? Yeah, oh yeah, I guess so. Yeah. A retriever. Mm-hmm. Damn. He's like a hunting hunting dog. Uh, and then the first prize winners go on to compete in an all breed show. Mm-hmm. So and that one is the best in show. That's the grand finale. Exactly. Right? Yes. Okay. Um. Wait a second. So they go into their separate groups, mm-hmm. um, and then before competing against other groups, they must mm-hmm. defeat other first prize winners in their group. So the winners of best in breeds compete against each other in group shows. So all the separate um, groups that I just mentioned, so sporting dogs, hounds, and all of those. Um, and then 
they need to win first prize within their own group. Mm -hmm. And then you get seven winners because yep. there's seven groups and then the, they compete against each other, those seven they winners, compete. and then you get the best in show, which is the highest, uh, highest prize. Um, yes. The best adogo. <laughs> so my, my question to you is it makes sense to me when you're, com when you are judging like a breed against like its own breed, like in standards and stuff like that. But once you start mixing the breeds together in the groups, then how are they marking like against each other? You know what I mean? Is it just performance at that time or is it still like, like, I, I wonder how, you know what I mean? It's probably both. It's kind of, I guess it's kind of like if Ralphie was competing against all the golden retrievers, um, like he's one within the golden retriever group and then he, yeah. he has to win within like the sporting group. Mm -hmm. and then win against so all the other groups. So but what I guess it would be like, is Ralph's, I don't know, gate yes. better than Gibbons? Yes. Right? So Yeah, like, like, so I'm wondering if the judges have, like, I wonder if there's judges specific to golden retrievers, like breed specific, like judges. And then there's like a judge who's had multiple different experiences so that when they're judging like the groups, then they go, wow, like that's a pretty nice golden retriever, but this is like the best Weimaraner like I've ever seen yeah, or, sorry, so there's, vice versa, or vice versa. <laughs> there's so a bit of terminology, there's breeder judge. Uh, mm -hmm. So that's a judge who specializes and has thorough knowledge in judging a particular breed. And then there's mm -hmm. the all-rounder. So a judge qualified to judge any breed. Okay. But yeah, so it's kind of like if Ralph was competing against, let's say like a poodle, Ralph's yeah. gait would be expected to be more like cheerful, whereas the poodle yes. would be more like like proud. Yes. But who's doing it best? Who has it the best? Yeah. Yeah. Who's got the best swagger that they're <laughs> supposed to have? The best kind of swagger. <laughs> the best kind of strut. It's not Ralph right now because he still walks with like, where he's like crooked. Oh, d yes. <laughs> did, 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 um, Wiggum ever have like different walks depending on what he was doing? Yeah. Like, so Gibbon, like, like when he runs, it's like a full on, like he looks like a greyhound. Like it's like in full on muscly, Ooh. like just like model, like you, you could see like the, the way his body moves. Right. And then there's like times where he's like so clumsy, like just walking around the house and not paying attention. He'll like trip over stuff or like, he's like, <laughs> <laughs> like he's tripped over stuff before. And then like when you throw like a toy like same thing. So like if I throw like we ha the way our house works is we have this long hallway and I like throw a toy down towards the our front door. Like I'll hit the front door with like a ball or like one of his toys and he will like run just like like crazy. He'll crash into everything and send the <laughs> shoes flying like all over the place like it's a total mess. And but as soon as he gets the toy in his mouth, it's like a Lippensan or Stan Stallion trot yes. like back back to me. <laughs> and he gets that like proud like like pristine trot whenever he is like Aww. proud of something <laughs> like it's a very proud like pristine like trot like impeccable trot and that's how I call him Trotsky sometimes I'm like oh <laughs> here comes my Trotsky and um but so yeah I wonder if like that's just sort of like it is like I'm sure gate is one of the things that they like they look for when yeah. when judging several like groups yeah, Wiggum had, <laughs> Wiggum didn't run, like he, he ran, he did not, I feel like he didn't know how to use his back legs, like they would just go flying to one side, it was just kind of funny, <laughs> and he would do like a little bit of a trot, like if he had something in his mouth that he shouldn't, and he was like walking mm -hmm. by, you could tell there was like a little bit of a quickness <laughs> to his walk, yeah. and just like do 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 um, yeah. <laughs> looking forward to seeing Ralph's personality more and more. Uh, yes. And then let me talk about some of the terms that I, I found yes. online. There's only four mm -hmm. that I was 
just kind of like, I'm not sure what this means. So there's slab sided. So that's when the ribs don't have a lot of curvature. So oh, that means okay. the dog is slab slided. Uh, the croup. So it's the top, it's the end of like the spine where like your coccyx would be, I guess, where it mm -hmm. um, reaches the tail, where it becomes the tail. So that's like the croup. And then the brisket <laughs> is the sternum. So like the sternum that kind of like reaches the belly. Mm -hmm. And then the tuck up, which I thought was, was funny because I was reading and it said, a sec um, excessive tuck up. <laughs> Um, it's like the waistline. So you know how some dogs, like, you'll have, like, the brisket, and then the waist mm -hmm. goes, like, really high, and it's really small. Like, their waistline is very small. Like boxers, like Weimaraners, yeah. like like greyhounds. Yeah, like yeah. all of those. So for golden retrievers, like, excessive tuck-up <laughs> um, is not something they're looking for. Whereas oh, really? Weimaraners, probably. Yeah, maybe, yeah. Um, there's also, so in the UK, there's also the, um, they've organized a dog show for crossbreeds named Scruffs, and they're judged on good character, health, and temperament. So that's, that's kind of cool. And there's yes. also, so the AKC also organizes the AKC slash Yukonuba National Championship, uh, which airs on Animal Planet. Oh. And then there's also awards for people. So Breeder of the Year Award and Lifetime Achievement Award. And there's awards for um, for dogs. So there would be five dogs that would get an award for canine excellence. So the ACE, ACE, AC, ACE. So law enforcement, mm -hmm. search and rescue, therapy, service, exempl exemplary, exemplary, mm -hmm. exemplary companion mm -hmm. dog. So those mm -hmm. are all other awards that, that are out there for dogos and people. Aww. Aww. Is there, like, for the, going back to the National Dog Show and, like, the AKC and stuff, are there awards for handlers, too? Mm. I don't know. I wonder. I, I, don't, I didn't see anything there. And it's not even, like, but, a, um, like a cash prize or anything. I don't, I don't even know what they get. But I know it's not really a, it's not a cash prize. Uh, I... I tried to look up some of the fees that were involved in, in this because I would imagine that it's quite expensive. a hefty fee. Yeah. I would say it's expensive. Yeah. For the I dog would imagine handler? that it would be. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But I can't even, I couldn't find any. Like, I even looked up fees on the AKC site, like show fees. Do you think they have a dress code? Because I always feel like when I see these dog shows on TV, everybody's mm -hmm. dressed very. Um, similarly yeah like the women are all wearing like skirts that come down to like the knee yeah with like with there it's like a dress um like a dress skirt suit yeah that they, they yeah. all wear and like shoulder yeah, yeah, yeah. pads <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no i wonder if this is like a requirement or these are the type of people <laughs> that are showing disqualified no shoulder pads <laughs> <laughs> um sorry your suit is too new for this <laughs> to compete you are disqualified <laughs> it's so mean we're like <laughs> i don't mean to make fun but it's true there's like a certain there they, they must have a dress code there's gotta be there's gotta be <laughs> but um <laughs> all those people in slacks and yeah jogging oh, around man. with their so funny is. Yeah, I didn't I didn't find anything here for like awards for handlers or anything like that. They just get like bragging rights. My dog yes. is best in show. Best in show. Best in show. All right. So what we were going to do next is being uh biased podcasters <laughs> is talk about the breed standards for our buttes, our homegrown buttes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um so I went to the AKC to look up what the breed standard is for the Weimaraner. So you can you can do this for your dog breed. You can hit up the AKC and just um, look up what your breed standards are for your breed. And it will take you to this page where there is a link to like a 
full PDF, like, doc, well, I don't know if it's PDF or not, but like a document that goes greatly into detail about what all the different details are. But then they also just have this, um, they have a photo of your dog with numbers placed along its body and you can click on them and it just sort of gives you a brief overview of those characteristics that they look for. So um, the number one on the Weimaraner here is just sort of not on the body anywhere it, and it just says a uh, general appearance. Um, so he's a medium-sized gray dog with fine aristocratic features. He should present a picture of grace, speed, stamina, alertness, and balance. Above all, the dog's conformation must indicate the ability to work with great speed and endurance in the field. And I think that's like a fancy way of saying like a big, beefy, muscly dog. <laughs> <laughs> I call Gibbs my little beefcake all the time. He's pretty beefy. Ooh. I haven't seen Gibbon in a long time. Oh, well, I'll well, have to, well, like, yeah, we have to get the, we have to get the dogos <laughs> together. We need to socialize. Outside, we're going in, we're going into lockdown again, I guess. Eh? Mm -hmm. But uh, it will have to be an out, an outdoor meeting. Yes. But we'll have to get little doggy masks for them. <laughs> <laughs> so um the second number on uh the weimaraner here it points to the head so again it goes into like pretty like great detail here that just talks about like the different bones and stuff like that it's like it's pretty funny like it just talks like um that they have like a prominent occip occipital bone and trumpets well set back so i'm guessing that's like you know like basically the top of your skull beginning at the back of the eye sockets like it's just crazy like these descriptions but anyways yeah. measurement from the yeah measurement from tip of the nose to stop equals that from stop to occipital bone so like that you'll see this like oftentimes and when i get to like the legs and stuff like that so it's same thing so they measure from like the the well i'll i'll, I'll get to that next but anyways the neck has to be clean cut and moderately long but it's like who determines like what is moderately long and or too long or not long <laughs> enough i mean there's like extremes i'm sure on like every and within every breed but i i would say gibbon has like a moderately long neck yeah um expression is kind keen and intelligent oh like how do you judge like how do you judge that <laughs> Ears long and lobular, slightly folded and set high. The ear, when drawn snugly alongside the jaw, should end approximately two inches from the point of the nose. Wow. So they look from a side view and then, like, measure that. So I, w I wonder if they, like, photo it or they do it based, like, literally, like, all on Just eyes. Just kind of, like, like I know they it. have their measurement tapes. Yeah. Because I know they have measuring tapes for measuring like the legs and like again when when you talk about the withers, the withers is like right in between. There's all these different terms when you, when you go searching into dog showing. Um, like Vero mentioned all those other ones earlier, but the withers is like right in between the shoulder blades, so it's from like floor, like end of the foot to the shoulder blades, and that sort of thing. So eyes in shades of light amber, gray or blue gray, set well enough apart to indicate good disposition and intelligence Aww. like how do you know how do you know <laughs> um all right so the next part talks about the body so uh his the back should be moderate in length and set in a straight line strong and should slope slightly from the withers which it does like they're very like slopey looking mm -hmm. like when these wyamaraners it's so funny the other night like my son let gibbon out and i was like oh is he is he going to the washroom is he like taking a poop and he was like nope he's like he's standing in his ready pose on the deck and it's like very much like the akc <laughs> national dog show <laughs> pose that that he stands in sometimes and i was like is he pointing because he's like <laughs> he's stacking and he's like no he's stacking <laughs> I'm going to tell him that uh, the chest should be well developed and deep with the shoulders well laid back and ribs well sprung and long abdomen firmly held moderately tucked up flank. Mm. The brisket should extend to the elbow. <laughs> <laughs> and it does. It's true. They have like these massive like like chest yeah. walls, these these Weimaranas. Um, so the forelegs, so straight and strong with a measurement from the elbow to the ground, approximately equaling the distance from the elbow to the top of the withers. So that's what I was talking about a little bit earlier. So this is where you see them like whipping out their measuring tapes at the show. And like, I always wondered what, like, what are they doing? But anyways, that's what they're doing. 
they're measuring uh, these different things. Yeah. The coat, short, smooth, and sleek, solid color in shades of mouse gray to silver gray, usually blending to lighter shades on the head and ears. A small white mo- marking on the chest is permitted. And I was very interested wow. to read this because whenever I look at um, Weimaraners, sometimes I... I see them with like a white mark on their chest. And um, when we bought Gibbon from the breeders, um, one of Gibbon's sisters had the white marking on her, uh, on her chest. And they, I remember them mentioning something about it. They said, Oh, somebody might not want her because of that white mark or whatever. And I said, Oh, is it like sort of like a non, non desirable thing of the breed? And he said, yeah, kind of, but here AKC is saying that that's perfectly acceptable within the breed. So when I, if, maybe if maybe it's when, just when people if, preference. Yeah, it could be a people preference thing. Yeah, it's true because maybe they want like a solid, colored Aww. like dog. Yeah, it's true. A distinctly long coat is a disqualification. <laughs> a distinctly oh, and and a distinctly blue or black coat is a disqualification. There hmm. you go. And um, then the hind quarters, so well angulated stifles and straight hawks. <laughs> <laughs> And musculation well developed. So I'm guessing that's like, you know, from their foot to like their heel kind of. And um, and I don't know what stifles are. I'm going to look it up right now. If you want to get started on your standard breed for your yes. Goldilocks. So number one is the general appearance. So it's a symmetrical, powerful, and active dog. Sound and well put together. Aw. Not clumsy. No. Oh nor long in the leg, displaying displaying a kindly expression and possessing a personality that is, that is eager, alert, and self-confident. Hmm. Mm. <laughs> Primarily a hunting dog, he should be shown in hard working condition. Uh, overall appearance, balance, gait, and purpose to be given more emphasis that, than any of his component parts. Faults. Any departure from the described ideal shall be considered faulty to the degree to which it interferes with the breed's purpose or is contrary to breed character. So that was general appearance. Aw, kind expression. So cute. See, all the the dogs have kind expressions. Yeah, but Ralphie has a little bit more. (laughs) Well, he does. He does. He has a bitey expression. (laughs) Now. (laughs) <laughs> All right. The head, broad in skull, slightly arched l- laterally and longitudinally without prominence of frontal bone, bones, forehead, or occipital bones. Stop well defined but not abrupt. Foreface deep and wide, nearly as long as skull. Foreface deep, nearly as long as skull. <laughs> hmm. Muzzle straight in profile, blending smooth and strongly in, into skull. When viewed in profile or from above, slightly deeper and wider at stop than at tip. Yes, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> no heaviness in flues. <laughs> I don't know what that is. <laughs> and here they mention the whiskers. So removal of whiskers is permitted, but not preferred. Wow. Why would people do that? I don't know. I thought that was like a major no-no when dealing with animals. Like you can't do it to like cats and I didn't think you should be doing it to dogs either. They're like whiskers serve like a very like good purpose. Do they not? I think so. (laughs) Yes. Um, So eyes are friendly and intelligent in expression. Medium large with dark close fitting rims set well apart and reasonably deep in sockets. Color, preferably dark brown, medium brown, acceptable. <laughs> it's funny reading this because it's just like, wow, it's very picky. <laughs> it is. It, it is very picky. And I'm wondering, like, you know how there's like reddish looking like golden retrievers. So I wonder if they're disqualified. I think too. they are. Yeah. yeah. I don't think they're recognized. The gingers of the golden retrievers. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> disqualified. Uh, So body, neck medium long, merging gradually into shoulders, sturdy and muscular. Back strong and level from withers to slightly sloping croup. Body is well balanced, short coupled, 
So short couple is like not a lot of space. Mm -hmm. Um, like not a big area of space, uh, with deep chest and well-developed fore chest ribs, long and well sprung, but not barrel shape loin short, muscular, wide and deep. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. I feel like this is really long. Or you can shorten it. Up. Yeah. So, um, the coat dense and water repellent cause they do have like a double coat. So heavy feathering on front of neck. So they like when yes. they have like that lion, like. Yeah, poof. that lion's mane. I want the lion yeah. poof on Ralph. Oh, I I hope you get the lion poof. <laughs> um, so the coat on head, paws, and front legs is short and even. Mm -hmm. And for color, rich, lustrous, golden of various shades. Feathering may be lighter than rest of coat. So I was just going to ask, because you know how on the on your on Goldens and hopefully Ralph too, they get the feathering off of like their front legs, like almost at their elbows. Mm -hmm. Like Nicole's Nicole's dogs have those. Yeah. Herps and Aves, like big time feathering. And that, and when they come to the cottage and get it wet, then it looks like somebody crimped their hair. It goes <laughs> yes. all like crimpy and it's so freaking cute. I love it. Ralph has the crimpy hair when I shower him. Yes. It's like crimpy Ooh. hair all over. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I can't wait. Oh my god, I can't wait. <gasps> He's so cute. They say here the dew claws on four legs are normally left on. Wow, see, whereas like I remember reading somewhere that on Wine Miners they must be removed. Wow. That's weird, eh? I you wonder would... if like there's a coat that covers it, then like it's it's fine. Or maybe it's to has to do with the job that they're doing. Well, that's too, what I was right? wondering. Like if they're but, you... but if Gibbs and Ralph are in the same group sporting right you would think that they would all need yeah. claws, but maybe it has more to do with like the appearance the general like maybe because they're tucked than in anything else in yeah all the fur on the golden retriever yeah because on gibbs it would be very obvious yeah very obvious yeah um and the tail because they have like a big thick tail right so thick and muscular mm -hmm. at the base uh tail bones wow. extend to the point of the hawk mm -hmm. and yeah slightly upward curve never curled over back wow hmm wow so i looked up what stifles are and it's almost like the knee joint of like the hind quarters so like oh. if you can picture like a dog's back leg you see like their heel their heel kind of like sticks up right and then the rest of their leg sort of angles up towards the body and i think that's what they're looking for is like a well angled they probably don't want like a super prominent like knee joint on the hind legs it yeah. needs to look like long and smooth like you know like in his stacked pose <laughs> That's stacked, Gibbs. So stacked. <laughs> You're so stacked. You're so stacked. I'm going to, like, use that instead of pose now. I'm going to be like, ooh, I'm so stacked. <laughs> Strike a pose. Strike, Strike a stack. A stack. <laughs> <laughs> oh, anyways, a lot of new terms and everything like that. And it's very interesting to, like, learn about. I don't know that I would ever enter the... I, I would like to go see a dog show. I like looking at yeah. them and seeing them and, and, and see them do well. And I love the the stacking and the, like, judging of them. Like, I love the, like, measurement and looking at the dog's face and stuff. And yeah. just the funny stuff running. that happens at... Yes, when they're running. Oh, they're running around with their so handler. So cute. It's definitely interesting. I will probably, if we're still, like, in... Well even if if we are or we aren't still in lockdown come the next national dog show i may watch it from beginning to end yeah. just just to see like I when. i'll watch every group it's going to be in the fall oh okay yeah it's going to be i think it takes place in like november and i wonder if they'll actually do it that would be fun oh man lots of fun we'll see yeah we'll see where we're at by that time uh, well, and if things like become normal, like that's that's becoming like the new phrase, or I'm sure around the world right now, when things are normal again, <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to like cure cancer. <laughs> <laughs> like they've got all these grandiose plans, but I would like to go to some of the Canadian uh, uh, kennel shows, mm -hmm. even the CKCs. Yeah, check stuff out. That can be stuff that we can do definitely. But learned a lot about at least all the terminology and stuff. Yeah. So. Look at that brisket. 
Look at that brisket. <laughs> Check out those stifles. So well angulated. You're so tucked up. <laughs> how how long do you think he is from the elbow to the withers? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Very interesting. Oh, uh, on an interesting note, I decided to look up to see if like the judges, like if this is like a volunteer or a paid thing. And it was saying that, no, they are salaried uh, anywhere between 15 and like $57,000 a year in, in uh, the United States of America. Hmm. So, but they said that with the average um, salary being around 30, 30 grand. So good to know yeah. if you decide on becoming... I, I thought very briefly about becoming a, a dog show judge, but, 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 no. but probably not. Probably yeah, not. I'd be too excited. <laughs> I couldn't, I couldn't contain the squeals of delight. No. All right. Well, that's a wrap. That's a wrap. Join us next time on a Les Boop Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.